The girl hadn't had a bath in a long time. As soon as she entered the classroom, her classmates laughed at her. Oh, <laughs> but she had a problem. It's her family bathroom. It's dirty and smelly and full of sludge. And this is her parents. One only watches TV. One is schizophrenic and almost blind. To buy contraband. She even robs her daughter of her dinner money. At the age of eight, she's scavenging for food from the rubbish. Going to school? A bath? Let's eat first. Living in an environment where everyone thought she was going to end up. The teachers also advise her not to take exams. What could she achieve if she never came to school? But this time the girl didn't agree. Here, I'll take it. Doesn't look that hard. The teacher didn't believe her and left. It wasn't until the end of the school day that she called out to her in surprise. How could you get a perfect score without going to school? The girl replied indifferently. A neighbor had picked up a set of encyclopedias from the rubbish. She had studied it all by herself. Now she doesn't know. She doesn't know how much her future studies will change her life. Her name is Liz. Murray is a real person. In the year 2000, she was reborn from the poorest slum in America. She went on to Harvard University. She became the miracle girl who shocked the nation. Three years later, her story was turned into this film. It is one of the best inspirational films ever made because it shows you how valuable it is to have hope. Even if you're not doing as well as you could be right now. Like Lizzie, she's already off to a bad start in life. But what's even harder is that she can't even keep a crap family like that. Mom's trying to get clean, wants to leave dad, and take the girls to move back to her stormy grandfather's house. But Liz wouldn't. She thinks that if she stays, that if she stayed, mom would come back. The family would not fall apart. It wasn't long before the welfare services came to her door. Because of the poor living conditions, they wanted to put her in an institution. Lizzie desperately pleads for mercy. Dad stood by and didn't say a word. It was only when the staff asked him to collect the luggage. He only moved. He apologized to Lizzie and hid in his room while she passed. He didn't even stop her until she left the house. Now Lizzie's heart is broken. All she could do was hope that her grandfather would come and take her back. But no one else came. She was completely abandoned. She was left in the orphanage. And it's another hell. A bowl of piping hot porridge was brought away, pouncing directly on Liz as the girls passed her. The other children laughed and laughed. In their eyes, the newcomer is a bully. This is the slum. Life in the orphanage is full of violence. Every time you work, you have to work more, trying to avoid the trouble. Until this day, one of the girls, in front of her, took the bleach and added it to another girl's shampoo. Hearing the scream of agony, Lizzie's heart finally broke. Much later, she finally found a way to escape. But now, her home was gone. Her father has been thrown into a homeless shelter. Lizzie is forced to live with her grandfather. By now, her mother is seriously ill. She was addicted to alcohol. She is dependent on her grandfather for support. Lizzie's arrival makes her grandfather even more furious. Finally, on a night when her mother was drunk, this conflict officially erupts. Grandpa throws Lizzie out. You should go end up trash anyway. Just like your parents. Lizzie had to go, so 15-year-old started to wander with her friends. She slept in the underground, begging for a living. Sometimes she was so hungry, she had to cover for her friends to steal some canned food to fill her stomach. But Lizzie would go to see her mother, who was seriously ill. While her grandfather was away, her mother always asked her when she was going back to school. Lizzie could only say, with a bitter smile, later, when you're better. But the wait was fruitless. One day Lizzie passed by her mother's usual bar. She went in and saw a pile of money on her mother's usual seat. The customer next door told her, your mother died this morning. Lizzie didn't say anything back. She just ran out crying. She ran wildly to the rooftop where she used to go. She hadn't cried when she was bullied. She hadn't cried when she was on the streets. But now she couldn't help it. Her home, the people she loved, was gone for good. The next day, accompanied by her friends, Lizzie goes to her mother's funeral. The coffin was a wooden box that had been donated by someone else. Name had been misspelled. There were no flowers. There was no priest. The word the workers used to refer to her is her. Grandfather impatiently dragged her sister away. The neighbors have gone too. A a friend finally looked away. She takes a pen and writes his mother's final epitaph. Lizzie and her sister's mother. It was the only comfort she could give Lizzie. She's gone. Two. Now Lizzie is all alone here. She suddenly jumps onto the coffin and lies down. 
She lay on her mother's coffin until the workers came and drove her away. Only then did she stand up and she took three steps back and left. This is also a public cemetery. A week later, there is no headstone, no marker. Lizzie will never find this place again. Now she finally understands that it was too late to change someday. She doesn't want to wander, decay and die in vain. She wanted to change that. She has to change. I don't want to be an idiot. I want to go to school. Lizzie goes to a school to enroll, but because she didn't know the underground, she was late on her first day. There's no more room, but Lizzie doesn't give up. She insisted on getting her enrollment form. She finished writing an application for admission. Lizzie waited for a long time and the, the headmaster finally appeared. Lizzie seized the opportunity and expressed her determination to the headmaster. I'm smart. I know I can succeed. I just... I just need the chance. I need the chance to climb out of this place that I've been born in. I mean, everyone I know, they're just angry and tired. And they're trying to survive. But I know that there's a world out there that's better, that's better developed, and I want to live in it. These words struck a chord with the headmaster. He agreed to let Lizzie in, but on one condition. He had to meet with her parents. Lizzie is afraid to let anyone know that she is homeless. She has to go to the homeless shelter to find her father. It's been years since they've seen each other, and there are no pleasantries. It's like a business deal, stumbling through the task. Dad escaped as if he was on his way out the door. Seeing all that his daughter had fought for on her own, he began to realize that he had failed in his duty. But Lizzie doesn't complain. After all, it was her father who took her to her first book as a child. It was because of him that she had found her way out. Dad couldn't resist giving her a hug. Before he left, he said to her, I blew this. But you can do this. Dad left. Lizzie also wiped away her tears and she began her own journey of study. She realizes that she is two years behind in her studies and had to catch up. Every time she left class, she asked the headmistress for help with her homework, even late at night. She was still in the classroom, studying. Even the headmaster advised her not to drive herself to death. Now I'm gonna let Liz seized every opportunity to study. She reads on the way to work. She taped them to the sink at work, sleeping on the underground when she had no place to stay. Lizzie did the maths. A 70-minute train ride. If she slept for four trips, she could get to school before it opened. It was tiring, but, but for the first time, her life had a routine, and for the first time, it gave Lizzie peace of mind. After that, the headmaster decided to send the top 10 students to visit the university. By this time Lizzie had already come first in the school. They went to Harvard and saw the stately buildings. Cheerful and confident student. For the first time, Lizzie's dream became tangible. If she had worked hard enough, why would she try any harder? She wanted to go to school here. The first thing she had to do was to settle her tuition fees. Lizzie began to gather information about various scholarships. Finally, she saw one that was suitable. It was a special scholarship from the New York Times. That gave $12,000 a year until she graduated from college. It was a special scholarship from the New York Times. Over 3,000 people apply each year. Only six people get it. And this time the application was about how have you overcome challenges and obstacles. This application took Lizzie four months to write. Until her 18th birthday, she hurriedly handed it in to meet the deadline. It was not only her coming-of-age gift to herself, but also because now she could finally tell the truth about her homelessness. She would no longer be thrown into an orphanage. There's no doubt about it. First in the school got Lizzie through the preliminary examinations. On the day of the interview, Lizzie borrowed a coat from her sister to cover her shabby clothes. To cover her shabby clothes. During the interview, Lizzie told her story with honesty. The death of her mother, living on the streets, peace of mind, no complaints. When it was over, the interviewer personally escorted her out the door. She was given a big hug. She did pass. Eventually Liz got on the podium. When people asked her how she managed to make it, here's what she said. How could I not do it? She didn't choose her birth. She had no choice in her life. If she wants to move forward, there's no way back. So why not try a little harder? This is the story of Lizzie Murray.